What is going on, all you Pokemon Collective Maniacs out there? This is Ryan, the Pika Pika Papa, and this will come as no surprise to you, but I don't just invest in Pokemon cards and sealed products. I also enjoy investing in the stock market, and one of the vehicles that's really popular in the stock market, and I know I partake in uh, to a certain degree, is index funds. And index funds in the stock market, what they are in the most simplistic form is they take a bunch of individual stocks and they lump them into one fund. So you can pay, say, $100 for one fund, and you can end up owning 20, 30, 50, 100, 500 uh, different individual stocks. Now you end up with just a percentage of each of those stocks, but what that does is it's a way to own one thing that gives you broad diversification, right? It prevents you from any kind of crazy whiplash if one stock goes up or one stock crashes. You know, there's a lot of upsides uh, to investing in index funds. And so 17 months ago, as I was doing one of my, I don't know, Pokemon deep thoughts, I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we had some Pokemon index funds here on the channel uh, that we track? And so, of course, being the crazy person that I am, I started doing that. I created these Pokemon index funds. Now, I will be honest with you. They don't operate like real index funds. Real index funds, you know, if, if we're tracking the top 20 of a certain set, as one falls out, you would have to pull that one out and put a new one in, and that's not it. We're starting with the, the, the base of all of these from 17 months ago till now. So it's worked out really cool. There is a ton of learnings, and I try and update this every quarter, and we have a ton of fun when we do it. And one of the things that I thought was cool about this was, you know, if this were put into practice, and I know there's companies out there who talk about doing it. I don't know if there's anybody who truly does index funds. I know that there's companies out there where you can buy fractional ownership of really big cards, and I, I don't necessarily know how I feel about that. But when I was thinking about if this were real, which it's not, this is just me in my silly space, but if it was real, there's some upside. You know, when you think about it, booster boxes and elite trainer boxes, they take up a lot of space. And if you want to be a serious sealed collector and have hundreds of boxes that you hold over the course of years, you're going to need some serious space in your house in order to keep all of that housed, right? So guess what? If you were able to have some of them on the side, which you could enjoy, but then invest a lot of that money in an index fund to track those booster box movements, you wouldn't have to worry about storage. You know, the other thing, as I said earlier, picking an individual card to outperform the market is really challenging. Even when you think you absolutely have a home run, there is always that risk. And the beautiful thing about index funds, like we're going to talk about in just a second, is it helps spread that risk out across a bunch of different cards. So if you don't get that one right, guess what? There's probably nine, 10 up to 20 other ones that help lift that card up. So it helps broaden your exposure and limit your risk a little bit. The other thing is, hey, maybe you do want some of these high-end cards, but you don't want to go spend five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars on them, right? I think this is an awesome opportunity in order to get a piece of some of these cards, uh, and and again, partake in the upside. If there are some really expensive cards that you think are going to have a really bright future, I know there's a couple that I think that way of. Uh, then this would give you an opportunity to get a piece of them, and then to separate the collecting from investing. And I kind of alluded to this a minute ago. You know, I am a growth collector. I love collecting things. When you love collecting things, you don't love selling things. Okay, so if there were index funds like this that were very buttoned up, that were very professional, that I had a lot of trust in. Uh, I could collect what I love in the background and have it here and show it off and enjoy it, but then I could also invest in the index funds, which makes it easier for me to sell because it's less tangible when you're just investing in index funds. So with all of that out of the way, I am going to tell you what baskets we are looking at today. Now this does change. At the end of last year, I asked you all, I said, hey, listen, do you guys have anything that we are not tracking that you would like? And you gave me some great feedback. So think about that as we go through this video because I'm going to ask you again at the end of this year. But the baskets that we're tracking, okay, we're looking at V-Star Universe PSA 10s. We're looking at the 20 most expensive PSA 10s from 17 months ago, and we're tracking how they have moved ever since. Sword and Shield Alt Art Index Fund is a ton of fun. I can't wait to show that to you, right? That's where we looked at all of the top 20 Sword and Shield Alt Arts 17 months ago. We baselined them from a price perspective, and I can't wait to show you how they have moved since then. And we do look at Sword and Shield booster boxes, which I thought would be really fun because it was an interesting time in the Sword and Shield space then. But we also look at Japanese booster boxes from 2021 and 2022. And again, just because I'm trying to get a little bit of a diversity here. So we have Japanese booster boxes and Sword and Shield booster boxes. Now, we're looking at the Lost Origin set as well. I tracked the top 20 cards from the Lost Origin set. I am a huge fan of Lost Origin. I love the Giratina. I love the Pikachus in it. So I thought it would be a ton of fun to track that. And Roaring Skies, the top 20 cards from Roaring Skies. You've heard me talk about it at nauseum. Even 17 months ago, I said Roaring Skies is one of the most undervalued Pokemon sets I have absolutely seen. I still feel that way to a certain degree today, but it's going to be interesting to see how the Roaring Skies top 20 cards have moved. And then we have two what I call ultimate lists. So the first 
first one we're going to talk about is the Charizard, the top 15 most expensive Charizard cards that were there 17 months ago. I'll walk through that in a minute. And then at the end of last year, you guys said, well, why don't you track Pikachu cards as well, specifically Japanese ones? So we're going to be looking at the most expensive Japanese Pikachu cards and how they've moved as well. So lots of fun stuff we're going to talk about tons of cool data and again i will continue to do this as the years go on and i look for input from you so if you want to get a piece of this if you want to see more of this hey again we do it all the time hit that subscribe button if you haven't already if you like what you see give us a thumbs up and if you have questions or comments drop them down below i got a small channel obviously we do a ton of work those three small things go a long way in helping me out and i really appreciate it so the first thing that we're going to look at is that charizard set i was talking about but i got to walk you through how we got there for the charizard ultimate list so we started with the 15 highest valued English Charizard cards according to Pokadata.io 17 months ago. Now, this is an investment, right? When you think about index funds, these are investment grade things we're going after. So I made sure I wanted them to be graded by PSA. But then because these charts are so incredibly expensive, I had to apply some rules, right? So I wanted to make sure that if a PSA 10 price was greater than $10,000, then I went after the PSA 9 because let's say the Charizard base set first edition hollow, right? Like I didn't want that to be a hundred or two hundred and something thousand dollar card, right? It would take up the majority of the index. So I bumped it down to the PSA 9 card. And the other thing I wanted to make sure was that the PSA 9 or 10 population was greater than 200. I wanted to make sure there was some liquidity, that way these cards could sell. And you know, if you have a really small population, sometimes one sale can really spike the price or tank the price. So what I found is that 200 is kind of a sweet spot. So these cards are selling and you're gonna see the prices are moving and it's just been a ton of fun to watch this. So there it is. Those are the prices that were going on 17 months ago. You'll see the PSA 9, PSA 10 distribution. You'll see the population report from back then. But now we're gonna look at the Charizard cards themselves and oh my gosh, look at that. The overall index, when you look at the change in price and when you make sure you have an even distribution of all of these cards over the last 17 months is actually up 19%. Now that is not what you're gonna see out of some of these Sword and Shield Booster Box Index Funds that we look at later on, but when we think about some of these older vintage cards, like this is a really strong price appreciation. 18%, 19% over 17 months is nothing to shake a fist at. And what was really encouraging to me, just for the hobby as a whole, is when you look at that top card, right? The Charizard Hollow base set uh, first edition. It is up 46%. And just to validate that, on the left, I have straight from the PSA website, the last three sales of those PSA 9s. And you can see one on 8.13 sold for $22,000, one on 6.14 sold for $24,400, uh, and then one on 5.28 again sold for $22,000. So that's a north of $23,000 card right there. So to see that over the last 17 months, that card has appreciated 46%, especially after all the craziness that happened with the pandemic, when that card's prices went absolutely through the roof, just irrationally high, came crashing back down, to see that over the last 17 months that price is starting to appreciate again more organically more naturally that's very exciting for me and then you got other cards like that's charizard secret sky ridge card is up 21 percent we got a couple stonkers in here right the blaine's charizard first edition gym challenge that's down 24 percent uh what's another one on here that's down the charizard gx burning shadows is down a little bit i still absolutely love that card i think from a price perspective that card has a very bright future so that is one of the things too like not all of these cards are going to represent um full potential they're going to grow some are going to go up, some are going to go down, but when you look at it over the course of the time, when we start tracking this, that is what really matters. So some really cool cards in here, and I thought the Gold Star from Dragon Frontiers would be cool to highlight, and a couple others. So here they are. Here are the ones I wanted to call out. Just the Blaine's Charizard, like I said, down 24%, but still a really cool card. But that Gold Star from Dragon Frontiers, up 55% over the last 17 months. Gold Stars are just something absolutely unique and awesome, and I think the hobby is always going to love them. Then you got the Sky Ridge card right there. I mean, it is just absolute stunners. This, this index is full of some of the best cards in the entire hobby, so I think it's really cool to track. And again, up 19% over the last 17 months. Really, really cool for Charizard and really cool for the hobby as a whole, if you ask me. The next index that we were looking at was the Pikachu one that I was telling you about. Now remember, these are Japanese variants. These are all PSA 10s. It checked all the boxes. They're all PSA 10s. Lots of Poncho cards on here. You got lots of Mario and Luigi, car Luigi cards on here. You got lots of anniversary cards on here. Uh, but this set, this index didn't perform quite as well. A lot of it was driven by that 20th anniversary Fiesta card up there. You know, that card has been $10,000 for a long time. Uh, now the most recent comps have it down at about 7,500. So you drop there. But then you got this poncho wearing Pikachu card, which we'll look at here in just a minute. That's up 42%. So strong growth there. But then listen, Mario's up 14%. Luigi's down 26%. And then you get a rash of these poncho cards that are down, like the Charizard ponchos down 23%. The Requaz 
Plaza ponchos down 13%. Um, you know, you get, it just seems like, I don't know, I, I always wondered how long the hobby would love those poncho Pikachus. Now, you can't shake a fist at those prices. Those prices are still through the roof. However, the overall index, again, as I said, this one I started in January. From January till now, the overall index is actually down 8%. And you can see some of the cards that are driving the growth and some of the cards that are driving that loss. It's really interesting. Mario's up 14%. Luigi is down 26%. I'm actually Team Luigi. So uh, sad to see him down 26%. As I said, that Fiesta card and the other anniversary card to the right there, both of them are down 25 and 41% uh, respectively. But then you got a couple Poncho Pikachus, which are doing well right there. So really interesting to track this thing out and I'll be fascinated. This is a set that I'm going to continue to monitor. I'm going to keep it through all of 2025. I guarantee you, I think it's going to be really interesting to see how these Japanese cards uh, kind of hold up because the market is cyclical, right? The Japanese cards were the hottest thing around for a long time and now they're kind of phasing out just a little bit. So we'll keep an eye on this as we keep going. The next one we're looking at right here is the Sword and Shield Booster Box Index. And again, 17 months ago, look at some of these prices. Most of them were actually right at MSRP, Chilling Rain. Fusion Strike, Silver Tempest, Vivid Voltage is sitting right there. Remember, MSRP for Sword and Shield booster boxes is $145, right? And then you got Lost Origin was over MSRP. Rebel Clash, Sword and Shield, Evolving Skies was sub $400 back there. So the thing that I wanted to call out was this. If you look at how they have moved, the biggest gainers came from the ones that had the highest jumping off point, which I think is a huge lesson for all of us to learn. Listen, don't be afraid because a booster box is in the 140, 150 range. It doesn't mean that there's not big gains ahead. If it's a great set. The booster box is going to perform really well. You'll see Evolving Skies is up 95% since then. Lost Origin, which was the second highest from a not including Rebel Clash and Sword and Shield. I don't count them. Those were just a, a play because they were they were short printed. But Lost Origin was up 35%. Chilling Rain's up 51%. Fusion Strike was up 52%. So really, really strong growth for them. And overall, this whole index since we started is up 36.2%. So I got some great lessons from this one and certainly things that I'm going to keep top of mind as I'm working through Scarlet and Violet as well. Well, next one right here, the Japanese booster box. And I will just be totally transparent. This is the hardest index of all of these for me to get information from. I have to go to Pokadata.io and then I have to go on eBay and try and validate the prices. So these prices are as accurate as I can possibly be, but there could be some variance. There's actually one that I'm going to call out where I know there is some variance. But overall, no matter what, even if there's some variance to the upside, okay, this index is up 2% over the last 17 months. And when you looked at the Sword and Shield booster boxes, that is up 36%, right? Even if there's a couple percentage points of upside that is just because the, the numbers aren't 100% accurate. This is still far, far underperforming uh, the Sword and Shield era. So a couple things that I wanted to call out. We talked about the big boxes from Sword and Shield and how they outperformed. Well, the big boxes here were EV Heroes and Blue Sky Stream. And EV Heroes is the one specifically. I think that's more of a $370, $380 box, right? Like the data pulled at $332, but I really think that's more $370, $380. So you got a couple dollars in upside there for sure. Uh, that box has performed really well. Well, EV Heroes is just a wildly popular uh, booster box in the Japanese side, and it should be. It's got amazing cards in it. And then Blue Sky Stream is another one. You know, that was the second highest starting point, and it's up 25% over the last seven, 17 months. So when you talk about investing, you know, I always say invest in quality. You can, it's really hard to go wrong when you invest in high quality assets. And these were certainly two of the highest quality assets, and they've given us some of the very best returns over the last 17 months. So next one right here, the top 20 Sword and Shield alt arts and my goodness have sword and shield alt arts gone through all kinds of iterations over the last 17 months now really when we started this for like the first three four five months it was actually on the downward trend if you look at the very first update video i did of this all of these were in the red all of the prices were coming down however then not long ago right we had all of the booster boxes all the sword and shield booster boxes that sold out on the pokemon center overnight and then all of these pop back up. I mean, I'm talking overnight, these alt arts were going for ridiculous prices. And then what happened two months later, they all started coming back down. So that is what's so cool about holding these things for the long run. You're going to have times where they go down, times where they go up, times when they come back down. But if you're in it for the long run, I promise you that the, the trend line will just work its way out, especially for high quality cards like this. So really, there's only two cards on here that I saw that were down. The Charizard from Brilliant Stars, which Brilliant Stars, I still think is a great set, but that Charizard is in very, very, very high quantity. Uh, and then you get the Aerodactyl from Lost Origin. You got the big Giratina at the top of Lost Origin. You got those two Pikachu cards, which I really like. Uh, but Aerodactyl just seems to be coming down a little bit. But 
Even though over the last 17 months, both of those cards are down, if you look at them, here's what they've done over the last year. So over the last year, Charizard has actually been coming up. I told you not long after we did the initial data pulls for this, prices started to drop on those alt arts. So it's actually been working its way up after that initial drop. And the same thing with the Aerodactyl. It's sub $100 right now, but it's still up 14% from where it was a year ago. And that Charizard is still up 24% from a year ago. So we could be seeing some brighter things ahead. I can't wait to do this video again in January and kind of do a relook and see where everything ends up. But really interesting to see how the Sword and Shield Alt Art Index has performed. Next one's right here. Pokemon Center Exclusive Elite Trainer Box. And you know that I am low-key obsessed with the Pokemon Center Exclusive Elite Trainer Boxes, particularly in the Scarlet and Violet era. And one of the reasons is you can't beat the returns on these things. I mean, just look at it. Paldea Evolved, Obsidian Flames, Pokemon 151. Heck, even Paradox Rift is down 7%. But guess what? I have no doubt that in the long run, it is going to do just fine because it is still sold out in the Pokemon Center, right? Now, I do have some concerns about some of the newer ones. Twilight Masquerade is a wildly popular popular set, but guess what? It is still available from an Elite Trainer Box perspective on the Pokemon Center. So I think that they are probably upping their production quite a bit to meet the demand that we saw in the beginning of Scarlet and Violet. Now, this index is up 20.8%, but as I'm going to show you in a minute, that's driven by just a few boxes. But the good call out from this one is, remember, I started this 17 months ago, and I just pulled what the prices were. So when you look at this list, Silver Tempest, Pokemon Center exclusively, trainer boxes back then were $73. I didn't start off at MSRP because at the time, that was the market price for it. So I started off at $73. Fusion Strike started at $72. Heck, Pokemon Go, Pokemon Center exclusively, trainer boxes back then were sold out, and they were going for $72. So when you think about all of this, remember, if these had started at MSRP, I think we would see a much stronger gain. But still, even with all of that, you're up 20.8% over the last 17 months. But I will admit, you got you just got to call a spade a spade, right? Like, it is really driven by some of these very few Scarlet and Violet Pokemon Center exclusive Elite Trainer boxes. 151 is just absolutely on fire, up over $220 at this point. Then Obsidian Flames, that's up at $130. So it will be interesting. I am waiting for Twilight Masquerade to sell out. And then if it does... Does. I want to see how long it takes for it to sell out. Then I want to see if it comes back in stock. But up until now, now I'm really on the fence about how these are going to be in the long run. I love the stamp promos in there, but if there's no exclusivity to it, then I'm not going to love it quite as much. I'm still going to buy them, but I won't be as enamored with them as I am right now. Next list right here, you know I love a Lost Origin, so we started doing the Lost Origin top 20 cards, and these were the top 20 cards uh, when I pulled the data, and it's interesting, not a lot of cards are up. The only one that's up and barely up is the Giratina V Alt Art, which is absolutely fire, and the Pikachu V. That's one of the reasons I love this set so much. I love you have an awesome chase card that's over $300 in the Giratina, but then you also have the, the secondary cards, which are awesome artwork in Pikachu, and I just think that there's a, light to, a lot to love about this set. However, it doesn't matter what I think. All that matters is what the market thinks. And when you look at how some of these cards have performed, I mean, all of these are down significantly, right? And they're actually, the whole index is down 14% over the last 17 months. And what's interesting is when you look on the right, I have that column that says new ranking. So on the left, they're ranked 1 to 20, where they were. And on the right, you have new ranking. And you'll see that a lot of these cards aren't even in the top 20 anymore. Matter of fact, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of the original top 20 aren't even in the top 20. 20 anymore. So that just goes to show you that things change over time, right? Cards that are at the very top can sometimes fall all the way down, but most of the change happened in the bottom 10, which is very, very interesting. And some of the cards, like I wanted to call them out right here, the Galarian Preserker right here. Okay, look at this one. This was an alt art card. You can see the big spike right there. Well, when everybody went crazy for alt arts, this card wasn't insulated from it. Everybody piled in and this thing shot up to $22 and now it's been working its way back down ever since. But then you got another card like the Experiment card right there, right? This card has just been on a downward spiral ever since we started doing this video series for this index fund. And again, what's in the top 20 today might not be in the top 20 tomorrow, so make sure that you're always keeping that top of mind as you look at all of these cards in Scarlet and Violet. Now, the next one right here is the Roaring Skies Index Fund. As I told you in the beginning, I have been obsessed with Roaring Skies for a long, long time. And uh, from a percentage return perspective, uh, Roaring Skies Singles Index wins. Uh, it's up 58% uh, over the last, I don't know, what, 17 months. And you look at how some of these cards have changed. I mean, the Rayquaza at the top is up 180%. You know, the M Rayquaza EX is pretty much flat. But then the other ones, the Winona, I freaking love that Winona card. I think that is a stunner. That's up 92%. So you just see a lot of really 
really strong gains. And again, when you look at the right, the rankings have shuffled, but the prices have appreciated. The XY era, if you watch my videos where I do updates on the individual eras every single month, the XY era has been the strongest performing era in 2024. Every single month, the top 20 singles cards have been up versus the previous month, which is just absolutely insane. The XY era was unloved, it was overlooked, and now it's st kind of starting to get its due. So really cool to see this index doing well. And these are some of my favorite cards on here. Like, yeah. I get it. If you look at the Raquaza, it's super busy. You, you might you might <laughs> you might have a seizure when you look at it, but it doesn't matter because look at that price growth. It's worth the risk, right? The price growth on this thing is absolutely insane. And then I thought it'd be interesting energy switch. I did not have energy switch going up almost 400% uh, on my bingo card over the last year. Look at that. In October of 2023, it was a $4 card. Now the way it's it's all the way up to $20.63. And you can see the light blue lines. I mean, it's not one or two sales. Like both these cards are selling with some velocity. So these current price points uh, are really, really supported. So it's really cool to see uh, the XY era and see these cards get a little bit of love. And uh, the final one right here we're going to talk about is the V-Star Universe PSA 10 Index. I don't have any graphics for it because I knew at this point in the video I was going to be tired, and I am. But the reality is V-Star Universe has been printed into the ground. It has been graded into oblivion. When you watch our grading report video where we look at the actual grading data from PSA, BGS, SGC, CGC, uh, and then we look at the individual sets and individual cards and such, the V-Star Universe set has been graded more than any recent set. I mean, by a mile, by magnitude. So what happens is what you would expect. When it's graded that much, the PSA 10s, you know, they're going to be a dime a dozen to a certain degree. Plus, when you add in the fact that the Japanese cards are such high quality, Quality, you know you're going to get a ton of PSA 10. So no matter how cool the card is, that Pikachu card is pretty freaking awesome. But guess what? In a PSA 10, it's still sub $100 because they're all over the place. So lots of regression here. Overall down 29% over the last 17 months. So, you know, we ended with our biggest gainer and our, our final two were our biggest gainer and our biggest loser. So no graphics. We don't like to highlight losses, but we got to call a spade a spade. So if you enjoyed this, listen, let me know in the comments down below. If there's something you'd like me to track, I'm happy to do that. It's a ton of work. So if you haven't hit the subscribe button and you had fun, hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I appreciate you more than I can say. I hope you have an epic one. Talk to you soon, everybody. Bye.